Welcome back to Sword AF, AKA D&D on Smosh Games, and that's what we call it. Thank you so much for joining us again for another epic tale. Last time our heroes made a delivery to Grendel, and by doing so, they unleashed a terrible turtle dragon. Uh, instead of just walking away and letting things happen and finishing their delivery, they chose the path of the hero, smashing the tablet, opening up the gate and releasing the turtle dragon into the world. But hey, at least the Bullywogs don't control it. But they're mad, so they have started to give chase mounted on giant toads, and our heroes are running for their lives. As you've noticed, the murals of the turtle dragon destroying ancient cities, ravaging coasts, you don't have time to think about what you've just done, because what you need to do is leave. Looking behind you, you see the beautiful stone masonry that was so impressive in the middle of the city crumble away, giving way to something that looked almost like a different city entirely. Dark crystal, maybe? But it's too late, because water and mud mix and obscure your view, pulling in bully wugs with it. The bullies are unable to find footing, familiar with ocean and mud, but not the combination of the two. Some of them are crushed beneath stone. Some of them are still being taken by the waves the turtle dragon left. Others dumbfounded at the fall of their cult. But a few are giving chase to you on giant toads. And you are running up to the front gates, which of course closed overnight. But you need to get past them in order to get to Gunfar and the wagon. What do you do? How tall are these gates? They're 15 feet tall. What's that ground look like? Crumbling behind you bit by bit. Sort of like an Indiana Jones thing, but it's better because we're doing it. Um, but everything is still okay going up to you. So it's this completely paved, thick, like perfectly flat, solid stone up until the gate, which then becomes a muddy path again. Are we still holding the, Do we break the? We did, I think Bug got the final hit on that and was nice. very impressed and everyone was very, very, very Well impressed. done, Bug. Good job, Bug. Thanks. Did it, Bug. Uh, oh Thanks, my God. God. That, that was, was huge. That was Chance. <laughs> oh, hey! <laughs> we we're running. For character yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gunthar! Gunthar, we're coming! I think he can hear us. You don't hear anything from the other side. Uh, we keep running. Is there anyone in our way? As you start to approach the gate, you start to make out the shape of four different bullies. And in the chaos and the dust and the smoke, you're not quite sure what you are seeing. Can someone give me a perception check? What is my Not me. I roll like shit. Everybody can, actually, because you're all looking forward ahead of you, right? What what dice is our percent? Oh, a two. That's a two. Eighteen. Twelve. 19. Oh wait, wait, wait. Two. Wait a second. Twenty. Twenty. So Dolores and Coda, looking forward, you see the shape of four bullywugs. But Dolores, you are just perceptive enough looking through the smoke. Let's be honest, it's not the first time that you have looked through smoke, Dolores. Oh yeah, of course. And you mm -hmm. see the shapes of Tongo, Tummo. <gasps> Chummo. What? God, I wish they would change and their rum names. Pum. It's so stressful. Rum pum. Rum pum. Uh, no, we don't uh, like rum pum. No, rum pum has I been know. on my oh. ass. Let me tell you that. Allow me to give you their titles again. Tungo, receiver of pleasures. I like. Tummo, bringer of lotion. Yes. Oh, Chummo, yeah. bringer of visitors inside. <laughs> and then rum pum, greeter of the gates. A.K. Clingy. A little bit clingy. He is clingy. <sighs> so you're running. This is a very quick moment. Uh, they're, they're, they're pretty hard on your child. I'd say they're about 50 feet behind, and these toads that they have mounted, these giant toads move pretty quickly. <gasps> what are you doing? Bug, do you want to jump on my back? Because my strong thighs can carry you. I'm doing fine running myself, Not Dolores. really. You're kind of dragging. No, I'm not. You no, are I'm... dragging. Get on her shoulders. OK. <laughs> wow, you listen to Coda? God, I have no pull. <laughs> All right. I jump right on Dolores. You got it, Coda? Yeah! Uh, Dolores, this is fine for you. You. I'm killing it. Yeah, it's totally fine. Legs. My thighs are crushing it. Amazing. They are, um, you know, ripping through my um, cute little dress just a little bit because they're so thick. Fernie's running, but he, he or he's he's charging forward. He's still a giant badger, mm -hmm. uh, which means as a giant badger, I have the ability to burrow. Can I dig oh. underneath this? <gasps> Can I do that fast enough to to dig beneath the bullies and and the gate and get through? Do they uh, do they denote a digging speed? It's it's, it's burrow. It's ten feet. Ten feet. So it's a little bit slow, but the gate is about, I'd say, two feet thick. So you can start doing that immediately. So I'd, I'd recommend if you're going to do that, don't check in with anybody. Just start going. I'm going to just start it. digging. Yeah, okay. I'm going to start digging. He's he's going to go right up 
before he gets to the bullies, he starts digging underneath and oh tries God. to get. Fernie's under the ground. But it's a pretty big hole, so other people could follow me. I would think. Amazing. So you're, I'd say you're about halfway through here. People are closing in. They're about 25 feet away. Oh. What are you thinking? You talking to the Can bullies? Can I charm and just them? Gonna follow? Not all of them. The, the ones behind you. There's Can't. there's like an there's like an army of angry riders. And then where are so the others? Pissed. Where's uh, right in front of us? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna charm uh, Rumpum. Rumpum. Any of them. You can't trust Rumpum. But if you charm him. Yeah. Oh. That's what I'm saying. He is a charmer, but not didn't work on me, so. Wisdom saving throw for this is, I'm sorry, it's a 19. They are not charmed. <laughs> Ooh. But you can still try to talk to them. Hard. Uh, hey, you guys, can you open the gates, please? <laughs> That's not what he meant by talking. Everyone needs to get out. We need to evacuate. Who, who are you talking to specifically? Uh, pick, pick one to talk to. I'm talking to... Tungo. Tungo. <gasps> I know what I'm gonna do. Tungo says, My friends, I am Tungo, receiver of pleasures. But I must be frank with you. There is no greater pleasure to receive than helping a trusted friend. Oh, oh that's Thank good. Thank you for showing me that the outside world isn't quite so bad. Quickly, Tummo. You know what to do. Yeah, I know what to do. He goes up to all three of you that are still there. You know, Fer Fernie's just like, <laughs> I'm like, underneath. Oh, yeah. I hope crazy. Fernie's Fer okay. Uh, uh, Tomo just comes up and goes, <laughs> and starts. Thanks. They start to uh, shove you through the center crack of the gate. Oh. Um, and oh, so they're you're alive enough, and yeah. all three of you are, are small enough to sort of be Ow. pushed through here. Uh, oh. Who's going first? Who's going first? Ooh, I'm skinny. I'll go first. So, Coda, you being live and covered in lotion are uh, completely making it through. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'd say you're about three quarters of the way through burrowing. Yeah, yeah. They're about 15 feet back on these okay. giant toads and they're pissed. Okay, so I'm trying to get through the gate and I'm trying to push Bug through because he's on top of me. Okay. In, in, a, in on top of my shoulders. Bug, how, how big are you getting? You're like two and a half feet, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Bug, you get through so easily. Weird. Yeah, now, easy. Now, Dolores, we did just establish that you have uh, these dummy thick thighs. Yeah, um, really big thighs. I wouldn't call them dummy. Dummy thick, slippery old thighs. Okay. Um, we're trying to build a fandom here. I like it. So this gives you one last moment with Rum Pum sitting there. Hey, Rum Pum. Listen, I know we don't have much time. Yes. You and I. Uh -huh. Had a connection, and I know I pushed a little hard, but please just allow me one moment of pushing a little harder. Uh, and he puts stupid. his hands on your lower back and pushes as hard as he can. Yeah. You pop through, and he holds up his face to the the window or the the little crack, and he says, "But I hope you'll always remember." Like, Whoa! and then there's a javelin that goes right <laughs> through his mouth. No, uh, uh, Bernie, you have made it through. You are all on the other side of the gate. What are you doing? Is, is Gar 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 there? Gar Gar Martin. <laughs> what? Wait, What's I... his name? Garland. Garland. Gar Garland. So you've got Garland basically behind you uh, that you saw chasing you uh, that was not being sucked into the water by the like crazy waves that were happening. You've got Garland on a giant toad and then two other bullywugs on a giant toad. And what about the what about the horse guy, the carriage? Um, Gunthar. Gunthar. Uh, but Gunthar. now we're so, through the gates, right? Yeah, yes. you're through the gates. Okay. So you look around and you're able to see the carriage uh, exactly where you left it. It looks like the tent has already been packed up, but Gunthar and the horse are nowhere to be oh, found. Oh, shit. Do you want to stand here and hold fast, or do you want to run? Well, first of all, I never got to say goodbye to Rumpum. <laughs> okay, but... we got to do something. Oh, Rumpum's hella dead. Oh, well, he was really clingy. He was. Okay. Um, so he deserved so, death. So That's Tongo fine. like climbs over Rum Pum's body and says, "Remember me well, even if this is the last time." Oh. Mm. Oh. And then I blow a little kiss towards him. Yes. Okay, yeah. guys, we gotta get in this car. Yeah. We gotta get right. in this carriage. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> we gotta go. There's no horse. I know. So what do we freaking do? It's up to you, Fernie. Can you be a Fernie? horse? Wait, where is Fernie back? Uh, yeah, Fernie pops up out of the game. ground, just like <laughs> <laughs> he's just bewildered how you guys got through. Uh, he's like, <laughs> did you jump over? That's Lotion. incredible. Lotion. They lubed us up. That doesn't make sense. We got lubed. To me, but okay. I'm Tomo, bring her over. <laughs> <laughs> just like here and get taken down uh, too from the other Fernie, side. Fernie, can you become a horse? Uh, but also, just just for clarity, I did like. Bur like bury the hole as I dug it, so Great. I was making sure to cover Great. my tracks. Amazing. Good so no, job. no toads Smart. are gonna pop up in this hole. Good Great. job, Fernie. Uh, I'm down to to keep running. Let's just keep running. I think we should okay. run because I'm... Running. should we run down the path or should we run into the woods? Let's run down the path and find Gunthar. We don't want to split up. Uh, we don't have to split up. We can run into the. But okay, okay. Let's just run. Let's find Gunthar. He's got to be run, close yeah, by. Let's He's find Gunthar. He's not gonna give up his his carriage. Okay, let's go. Amazing. So y'all are bolting down this dirt path. And as soon as you make that decision and start running and you get about 20 feet ahead, you hear these three giant slaps hit the ground. These 
toad mounted bullywugs have just jumped over the gate oh, like shit. it's nothing and they are chasing after you. It's looking like you've either got to start running your asses off or there's going to be a fight in about a minute. We what are do you running, do to aren't prepare? we? Yes. But we're running down the path. Okay. Yeah. We're running our asses off, but we have to run harder because these guys are really strong and they just leaped over there. I had to lotion up. Absolutely, and you guys are having trouble uh, because it is muddy terrain. They are not because they're giant toads. You can't change your body type, so you must adapt in a form that seems... Can, okay, can I disguise myself as one of them? That's a great idea, and you are about the size of a bullywug. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry, guys. I mean, actually, I'm only going to take care of myself. How are we going <laughs> to tell the difference? What if we kill you? You won't. Oh, you're right. I know your scent. You transform into a bullywug. Um, it, this is just like an illusory glamour. This is the first time any of y'all have seen Bug use illusionary uh, sort of trickster magic. So proud. Um, so it's it's a perfect like one for one. In fact, it almost looks uh, like the spitting image of Tungo. And oh, as I'm becoming weird. as I'm becoming uh, a bully, I go. Gosh, I've been trying to impress these guys all day with my stupid crossbow. I could have just done this shit. <laughs> we can still hear you, by the way. Damn it. <laughs> but what if we hide? Yeah. And you try to talk to them yes. and convince Ooh. them that and we I'll got away. And I'll I charm. love that. I can use my charm, too. Okay. Great idea. Great I'm going to I'm gonna uh, crawl up this tree really fast. Uh, I can I can go to the side of the road and burrow down and like right. kind of. I cast minor illusion to make tracks on the ground that look like we're going, we went that way. <gasps> So smart, Brilliant. so amazingly smart. All right, so the three Bullywug Knights saddle up to you and say, you there, Tongo, we thought we'd left you behind. You're faster than we thought. So Bug goes, I lost them, they went that way. And <laughs> Bug points the other way. God. Oh man, wow, those guys are fast, and boy did they go the other way. Adrenaline really changes your Dolores tone. Dolores is just we up there like, so, guys, I think we should call it. Wait, not call it. Did you see how they all escaped? This is a problem. No, Which direction I know. did they go in? How quickly? Did they all go in the same direction? Tell me. Yes, they all went in the. No, they spread out. Oh, they, uh, they all you, went in the same so they, direction. So they noticed that you sort of corrected yourself. Uh, what is your deception? Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you advantage on this because you are uh, illusionarily disguised. Um, Bob, my deception is plus four. Okay, so roll the d20 <laughs> twice. And give me the results. Oh, come on, bug! 11 plus four, 15. Come on, bug! Four plus four, eight. Four plus four, eight. Okay, got it. So um, Garland looks at you, because the max was 15, right? Yeah. Garland looks at you and says, you two, follow the path. Signal if they are down there. <gasps> you, I have some more questions. Uh, yeah. Remind me of your title again. So the other two knights uh, head off in the direction that Coda's tracks uh, sent off to. And Garland is is sort of saddling up to you even more closely. Remind me of your title again, Tongo. I'm just up on the tree like, oh God, oh God, oh God. Then I take my crossbow. <laughs> and, I, and I take it out and can I whack you? Or I mean. Yes, you can. Because now this is my loaded hit. Yeah. Because that guy died. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, <laughs> Burbis. Burbis. Burbis, you really impacted your life a lot. Yeah, Burbis sorry, did. it's been weeks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so can I take my crossbow um, right as he looks me in the eye and I could uh, fucking throw it, uh, uh, hit him? So yeah, throw so it. basically the way th uh, that a blessing works on this or having advantages, yeah, you're able to roll your two hit twice. So you have two chances to hit him as opposed to like potentially missing. So are you trying to like aim for a specific spot? Are you aiming for the toad that he's mounting? Are you aiming for him? I'm <laughs> aiming for him. For him, okay. And this will blow my cover. Yes. I but I'm just gonna do it. I think your cover is blown. <laughs> I think because we established- As you're like, should I just throw it? I, that's what you're doing this whole time. I feel like uh, and I'm just like, oh God. Should I God, kill him? Yeah, bug, like, shut up. Bug. <laughs> so I think also the fact that you have a crossbow and none of them have used anything like that before yeah. is a pretty big uh, hit. So <laughs> you might as well take your advantage on this. You know what? I, because it's also like a, a surprise attack, I'm going to give you three uh, bits of advantage on this. Yeah. So roll the d20 you. three times. Yeah. To hit. Seven plus two. Does not hit. <sighs> Lord Jesus. Ten plus two, 12. Doesn't hit. Plus three. Oh. Oh. Okay, bug. Oh, God. Bug. Oh, God. Bug. Oh, God. bug. Oh, my God. Four. Oh God, we're gonna lose right. him! So, here's how this works. <laughs> you fire your arrow, and you did get a 12, so you fire your arrow and it, it, it grazes the shield that is on his left hand. And he just sort of looks at it and says, 
Exactly as I thought. <gasps> and then I go, so, where oh. the hell did that come from? <laughs> so Garland begins uh, croaking in a very deep way that you haven't seen Shit. before. And he starts building up that same pink energy that you saw rattling the, uh, the gate that got smashed, begins charging into his hand, and he holds it up directly to your face as he places a palm on your forehead. This is all happening very quickly, and all of you are pretty far away. Yeah. So as he's sort of whispering to himself, you start to realize, maybe this isn't it for you. Maybe the hero life was a bad call, and maybe even among the trickiest of goblins, maybe you don't have what it takes. And as you start to make peace with that thought, you hear a pounding of hooves. And looking <gasps> down the dirt pathway, through the fog and the mist and the, and the dust of all this collapsing infrastructure, you see hooves. And as it begins galloping through, you look up and see a second pair of hooves not moving. We have Gunthar riding the horse, charging into battle. Gunthar Lance riding the horse? Straight through, I said what I said, <laughs> and he lands it straight through Garland's forehead and just spears him and impales him. Oh shit. And says, come on, we gotta go. Okay, he, oh, Bug goes, oh my Bug goes, god. Bug goes, I was about to do that. He grabs your right hand, whips you onto his back. He's like, this is the one time this happens. Bug goes, and wee! <laughs> he wheels around to the, to the wagon. Um, all of you bolt to it. I drop down from the tree. Bam! <laughs> I launch out of the ground just like gun far. Bug goes, guys, I found him. I found him for you. I did this. We were. Wa I was watching from up in the tree the it whole time. It was really hard it to was, watch. No, you guys were all the way down. I told. I threw them off your. We case. heard it elven was, ears hear everything. It I didn't really see sad. anything. Yeah. I was underground. <laughs> so Gunthar uh, actually looks to you and says, "Hey, don't worry." Whatever story you want to tell, I got gotcha. you. So he wheels around to the front of the wagon, picks up this part, hops off the horse, hops into his side saddle thing, and is like, come on, everybody in. You start to hear the oh other God. knights in the distance uh, be like, do you hear that? I think you went that way. I know, I'm the hearer, and I'm the thinker. <laughs> and so you hear them start to charge. Are y'all uh, are y'all piling into the wagon? Yes, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting into the wagon. Yeah. I am, I'm, all, I'm, I'm on piled. top of Gunthar. And You're on I'm top just, of Gunthar. I'm literally trying to just like, I am so embarrassed. In that moment, I'm just like, I'm done. Coda's mm -hmm. never gonna talk to me again. None of these guys are gonna, I'm gonna get kicked out of this stupid group. And, and I'm again, so, I I'm, tell. F I'm fuming looking out of the back of the wagon. So as y'all are sitting there in this moment, um, Gunthar quickly does a donut and slides the wagon wheels as quickly as he can, running into the forest and out, into the forest and out, into the forest and out, and then down the pathway serpentining. That's how you so, give a baby. That's how you give birth to a baby. <laughs> In and out. Oh, Trust God. me, not fun. Jesus. <laughs> so Gunthar runs down the path, um, leaving a set, many sets, you taking your lead of false footprints, hopefully losing the knights. And after a few minutes of extremely tense waiting, you realize you are no longer being pursued. And you take one long last look behind you at Grendel, sunken city. God, that place sucked. It was awful. It was awful. <laughs> Gunthar is, you know, listening to you guys, and there's been a little bit of silence other than y'all saying that, and says, what the hell happened back there? They had all these flies locked up, and they were, those flies were really struggling. <laughs> oh, God, Fernie. That's his, that's Fernie's takeaway from- Are you still a from, badger, Fernie? Uh, I, <laughs> he's like slow, yeah, he's sitting just <laughs> on it, but still as a badger, he's like, yeah, so they had a, it's really bad. Fernie, you are covered in mud and it's all dried up in your fur. <laughs> oh, sorry, he transforms and he gets back to normal. <laughs> the dirt flies everywhere. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> it got all over the apple pie slices in my purse, which I never gave you guys. You had apple pie? Yeah, that whole time. I was gonna share with the frogs, but it didn't seem so nice. Mm -mm. Listen, I wanna remind you guys of something. I know you're used to being mercenaries, and at this point I'm even questioning that. Times have changed and we're a delivery service, all right? So whatever else happened back there, as long as you dropped off the item and you got paid, I don't care. Don't like that noise. So, don't like that noise. Right. Um, um yeah. I made a scarf for you. Give him the pie. Last Give him the night. pie. Oh my god, would you like a slice? It set. is smashed to the minute. plate. I need a minute, I'm all set. Okay. 
And Gunthar uh, still has uh, Garland's like impaled body on his like uh, glaive, <laughs> and he just sort of like holds it over the wagon and like shakes it a little bit, uh. and like one gold piece no. drops to the ground as he just like, <laughs> That's like slinks insane. it off. That's um, insane. He's just like, all right, so let me get this straight. Uh, between all of us and the company's cut, we got paid one gold for this job. One one man's gold is another man's treasure. That's true. Great. That's true. Party. If you That's think about it, awesome. so true. that could be worth a lot. It could I be. It can't could be vintage. Do this. Bug just loses okay. it. Okay. We didn't get the job done. We didn't do any of it. We got hurt in the process, and you had to come oh. save us. Oh. Fernie's like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly true. <laughs> they never thought Yay. about it that way, but that's, that's exactly what, what just happened. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, God. You know, uh, Gunthar sees you do this, and you, you and Gunthar really bonded this whole time, but there's this moment of just like, there is a disappointment there. Oh! And it's, that's tough, and he says, you know, I'm curious if you all ever fought much. I mean, you're, you're mercenaries, but can you even hold your own? Have oh. you taken care of anything all day? Um, yeah, three children. <laughs> yeah, we unleashed a giant, horrible, unspeakable evil upon the world back what? there, so. Well, on, we don't know that it was evil. We... Well, well yeah, we it unleashed... was just a force of nature, but and nature is not evil. That's true. It's a turtle. But they said that they were, you know, we were in trouble for doing that. So I think it was pretty bad. And then a lot of frogs died. Oh, it felt yeah. really wrong to unleash it and then leave. Oh. I definitely killed some some of those frogs, so I can do some stuff. Definitely. Listen. Gunthar, sometimes you can't put a price on doing the right thing. Oh my god. And we don't we don't trade lives. Okay, Gunthar? That's we don't right. trade lives. Wow. Nice, Coda. Yeah. Listen, you might be proud of killing all those bullywugs, and I saw you kill dryads earlier, but I gotta be honest with you. I can't think of an easier task in this life than killing, killing bullywugs and dryads. And as he's talking and just walking along, a bullywug jumps out of the forest and just lands on his glaive. <gasps> like, he's just like, yeah, see, that just sort of happens. Oh, and the no, dryad no. like pops up like, <clears throat> and just like also like collapses on his blade. He's just like, yeah, this happens for like no reason. We didn't even figure Bug out is his just title. Mesmerized by you doing that. I didn't see. That's the thing. I didn't do any. of That's it just, just happens. It just comes to you. Wow. They're about as but maybe that was his job. Bug is feeling really insecure right now, you guys. We should give Bug a big hug. No! Bug, let's give hugs. Please don't make this. Anybody? Mm. You're making it so much worse. Bug! Lady with come, the crazy thighs. Come on, Bug. <laughs> put your put your body in between my thighs and I'll squeeze it out of you. Aw, thigh hug. You don't want a thigh hug, Bug? I love thigh hugging. Here's the deal. Yes? I need to tell Krungdar about this, all right? What but if you did for it? You, don't get ahead of me, Bug. Okay. Thankfully for you, we have another mission waiting for us at the mail post. Okay? Oh, I love letters. So if you somehow make more money in this one, I don't have to tell anyone about anything, all right? So double or nothing. Double or nothing. We're delivery service. If you want to play hero, be my guest, but by God, get paid. The Age of Heroes is over. You think I'm not disappointed about it? I was one. And now I'm stuck in this Wow, situation. really? What was that like? The worst is it's not the time. What? Give me my time. <laughs> I can't be around crying people anymore. It's, it's you don't even much. want a thigh hug. I want a thigh hug someone. Here, it's kind of a lot. He pulls out a, like a flask. He's like, you're going to need this. Uh, you're, you need to stay hydrated. Dude. Thank you. Bug takes it, chugs the whole thing. Bug, oh, you're two bug. feet tall. It's not, it's wow. water. It's, oh. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, oh do you oh, have any mead. wine? You thought whiskey? What? You think no, water's I'm, gonna I'm, help me cry? I'm driving. You think I have wine? <laughs> Come on. Is there a place that we can stop and get? No, we need some to do the second mission. I could use some mead. All right, listen. Let's go to the nearest outpost. Yay! So, Yay! A celebration. Not a celebration. All right, uh, consolation at best. Okay. okay. Um, this is the first time Gunther has raised his voice. So, um, as you are all walking up to um, a crossroads, you have to wait uh, because you are perpendicular to the main road, and uh, Gunther is looking both ways, being a very responsible driver. <gasps> Good. And you for see you. from down the left side another cart is approaching with four heroes in glistening golden oh. armor, cheering and laughing and high-fiving, and you see them go like, oh yeah, dude, you did that, dude! Oh, dude, no way! High-fiving, 
It's the bullies from earlier. I say, ho, travelers. Oh, you're making yourself known. Okay, oh, they're boy. looking, they're like, what's up? Who broke us out of our celebratory cheers and japes? How did your kraken killing go? Oh, oh, it's you guys. Oh, dude, dude, so sick, so sick. All right, we did this really coordinated attack where all four of us took two tentacles of the kraken, drove blades up either side, met in the middle, high-fived as we all cast magic into its little kraken beak mouth, blew it to smithereens. The locals were so impressed, they fucked us, and then we got a bunch of money. Sick. That's oh. insane. The exact same thing happened with yes, us. Yes, and also yeah. I have a whistle stick. Would you like to hear this beautiful song? I beg your unbelievable pardon? Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> I just play the whistle stick, and it gets really loud, and then I look at everyone and no one's looking. So you give me a deception <laughs> check, you give me a performance check. You are. You make this Ooh. so embarrassing. <laughs> Two. Two. Ooh, uh, 21. 21, all Great. right, so, they, so the leader of the, and these, these, there's three other guys in there, but they're all like lackeys, they're like, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, you're right, boss, like that kind of guy. So this bully uh, looks at you, uh, Coda, and goes like, wait a minute. Hold on, is that pee pee? <laughs> Did you pee yourself out of fear? I think I can smell pee pee on this dude. Dude, there's no way he fought the, hold on. Whoa, listen to this. <laughs> beep, 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 uh, beep, 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 um, All right. It needs to be tuned, but it, yeah, it kills. That was pretty sick. Thanks. Kills, oh yeah, let's go back to celebrating our kills. And they all turn forward and they start to, you know, they continue to cross past you, you know, perpendicularly like, Whoa. Uh, going away from the direction you need to go. Bugs on Gunthar just drinking water like it's whiskey. <laughs> we can't even hold a conversation with them. Maybe one day. One day we could beat those assholes, but not today. Yeah, well, have fun going wherever. We're on our way to your all your mom's house. They left for what? Me. Yeah, they, they, drove didn't, they away. I don't think they heard me, I but I still that. said it. Joke so much. Well, what? What is, I didn't say what we're gonna do at their mom's house. That's I true. I don't like that. What are we gonna do at their mom's house? Yeah. Have sex with their mom. Okay. Oh hey, my Bernie. God! <laughs> I wish. I wish you would. Not I don't you. know what sex is. I've heard people talk about it. Oh my God. And I don't know what it I is. Can't this is why we will never it. do anything. We might as well steal their money or something. One of these uh, days, because they're bullies, and I grew up with bullies. <laughs> I actually love that idea. That's really smart. We can't get anything <gasps> done. Let's just go to a bar. Yeah. All right, so y'all continue on down the path to the left, sort of the direction where they were coming from. Um, and uh, Gunthar takes you to, let's be honest, it's the equivalent of a gas station. It's a little outpost <laughs> um, where there is um, a single long pole and on that pole is like a perfectly rotund, very grumpy, like old man looking bird. And as it sees you, it starts to rhythmically go like, and Gunther's like, oh, that's right, we got a message. So he reaches into the fluff of this colossal bird and pulls out a scroll and he's like, for us, the bird's like, and flies off. He hands it to y'all to read. Um, he's like, all right, this is mission number two. Looks like Krungdar's got something for us. Oh, here we go. <sighs> Nothing saying, though, that we can't wait until morning. Y'all want to rest up at this little outpost here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, but I'm a little curious. All right. You want to read it first or you want to go to bed first? I want to read it. Well, let's read it. I kind of want to read it. You're right. Bug? Do you need a hug or? Just open the letter. Okay. Yeah. I gotta be honest, at a All certain right. point you gotta stop crying. I'm your biggest supporter, I'm your biggest fan. I stopped crying. That's great. <laughs> I'm just in a bad mood now. Your face is wet. Okay. <laughs> You're yeah. soaked. Your when Bug cries, soaked. Bug gets drenched. <laughs> You're just so just, drenched. You look insane right now. <laughs> Your clothes You're are wet. You're a f***ing badger, Fernie. <laughs> I'm not a badger anymore. I was a badger earlier, but now I'm back to being a weird horrific giant robot. <laughs> yeah. Don't call yourself that. Read but it. Yeah, exactly. It is from Krungdar, uh, who is your orc handler from what was formerly known as the Banner of the Unkillable Spirit, now just a delivery service. Hello, my dear employees. 
allow me to congratulate you on what I'm assuming is a very successful first mission. I am so proud of each and every one of you using your individual skills to really get the job done. So much so, and I am so confident in you that I am sending you mission number two right away. But be sure to come back and visit sometime, <laughs> okay? All right. Uh, looks like you did write in the laughter, that's weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's weird, how do you write laughing? Try it. L lol. So, continuing on the path of the delivery folk, the proud path of the delivery folk, your next stop is going to the Sinmarl Woods, an enchanted land. Ooh. You are supposed to meet with a furbolg named Tillip. A, a very what? A furbolg a named Tillip, a very famous gardener who lives in a shack by himself, who's been making the same delivery every week for the past, I don't know, 100 years. Maybe 200, 300? Nobody even remembers at this point. You've got a lot to learn from Tillip as well, so be sure to pick his brain about delivery and things like that. This is the best mentor you're gonna get in this day and age. From there, he's gonna give you instructions on what needs delivering and where. Good luck to you, and make sure to get paid and earn that tip. See you soon, love you. No, it's too much. Uh, See you soon. And he just like a lot of scratches and just like, sincerely, your boss, Krongdar the Bloodsmith, middle manager. He Sound questions himself a lot. Yeah, but that's okay, we all do. Well, glad we read it before bed. Okay, <laughs> you want to, here, jump on my thigh. We need Come to on. give Bugs some alcohol. Come on, jump on my thigh. Are we going to get, oh no, it's a gas station. It's it's basically a like a, rest, it's a little rest stop. There okay. better so be like, alcohol there. Okay, do you guys want to go on in? Yes. All right, so you enter this little rest stop, and uh, there's one, um, one little like grumbly little gnome on a stool, like behind sort of a cash register situation. I'll just say a till. Um, you know, reading a little uh, pamphlet here, just sort of thumbing through the pages, looks up at you and just looks right back down. Um, you can see there are a few aisles of like prepackaged goods, like maybe a little baked goods down the way. There's an extra little room off to the side. Um, there is a restroom area, and that's about it. Not a whole hell of a lot. Can we see, are there any fridges filled with... Fridges. Alcohol? Oh, no, sorry, they're, no, they're are there not. any um, cold rooms filled no. with alcohol? So you don't see any ice chests. You're welcome to talk to the gnome. Ooh. Hey, old friend. Yeah, what's up? How can I help you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was wondering if you have any mead or spirits. Me and my companions mead. need... Mead and spirits. Oh, yeah, let me, uh, let me check on this real quick. And then he like dips down. You see him like throwing a bunch of shit over him. And then he like pops up with a bottle and goes... <sighs> and there's just a bunch of dust oh. and moths that fly off. He's like, yeah, this is uh, wine. We forgot what <gasps> to call it, but uh, we call it the Purple Grimace. Mm. Oh. The bug was like, there's so much dust in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll take it. Yeah. Red wine, yeah. is it a full body? It's Purple Grimace. Okay. It's Purple Grimace. Got it. So it's earthy. Okay. Wow. Um, All right, purple I don't grimace. know, give me um, two copper. Oh. Okay. I give him two copper. Great. You Serious. have, when did you get two copper? We all have money. You'll have a little bit of money in your head. But, you, you you're, you're gonna have two copper. Would you like a scarf instead? No, that's okay. two copper. I'm okay. gonna give him two copper. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks. Just, yeah. we need money, we need Jeez, to scarf's worth money. so much more. And then I take the purple grimace and I pour, is there cups? Oh, you want cups? Yes, please. Sorry, that's one silver. Oh, one Don't silver. Just do it. Okay. Do you, would you like a beautiful um, uh, uh, mitten? Bug takes the bottle and just starts chugging it. Bug. Uh, oh, get, take it, Fernie. Fernie takes it, takes a swig, gives it back to and Bug. And it all just, <laughs> and I just like <laughs> try to grab it from underneath all the holes that it's coming out of. Oh no. Just and I take some too. I'll take the last drips. Great. Well, I'll. Hey, so it's actually are, it's actually not that bad. All of you are sitting with this for a moment, and after about thirty seconds, the alcohol starts to hit, and it is the most vile, putrid. Like this wine was bad before, and now it's old as hell, um, and not aged, old. So you're just sort of wallowing in this feeling of just sort of being a little bit off, and it's making you dehydrated, but. It is still a little bit of alcohol, and it takes off just a little bit of the edge. You're not happy about it, but it's getting the job done. I'm like dripping sweat. <laughs> I'm, a little purple ooze is coming out of my mouth, and out of my eyes, and out of my ears. <laughs> oh yeah, oh my that'll, that'll happen. That'll do it. So listen, uh, you guys need anything else? You need rooms, you need snacks, what do you need? Rooms? Rooms, rooms yeah. Yes. Great. Um, that's on me for adding in the S. There's one room, uh, four cots. That's no, fine. Cots? Yeah. It's like a bed. 
Oh. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be four silver for the night for all four. Jesus. Of you. Well, look. You are a money machine, huh? You walked into a store. You're right. You walked into a store and are asking right. for goods and services. Right. I'm out. Right. Okay, everyone cough up one silver. Well, what if I did, what, if, what if one, one of us did a little per, like a little something fun for you? Oh. I put in a bunch of work to make these rooms nice. And Room. I'm sick of your whatever that you're doing here. Do you want to spend four silver or not for yeah. a nice night's rest? Yes. You keep Fine. saying rooms, and it's room, it's right? It's one room. Okay. Okay, but is there an extra room? There's Just not. Maybe? Okay. It's four. It's four people in a room. It's Dolores, perfect. you didn't even want to pay for one room. Well, all I have is a slip to wear. I don't have cute PJs. <laughs> It's we just have us. You don't need to look cute, Dolores. I don't need to look cute, but I need to cover up because you guys are sick. Hey, uh, Fernie, just... Fernie holds out his hand, uh, like a thick compartment shoots up in his wrist, and, and four silver pieces land in his palm, <gasps> and he just slams it down. Oh, on the... thank you. And he just you look like it. an arcade when you did that. Oh. And then he grabs Bug and just like lifts him up, puts him <laughs> on his shoulder, and just <laughs> walks. As y'all are walking away, the like gnome just grabs the keys and is like. And just yeets them at you, and it just lands like perfectly. Oh, oh no, no, great! Of you course, just Coda. Shink. Coda grabs it, not even looking. So swift, so suave. Uh, y'all open up the door and see actually probably the most luxurious room you've seen. Oh in my the god! Room. Four <laughs> incredibly like immaculately decorated cots with like four perfectly laid out sets of PJs, all brand new, <gasps> freshly pressed and washed. And as you turn around, you just see him going like. Oh, you okay, were right. Well, thank you, you for thank the you. PJs. Good night. Good night. Okay, good night. Good night. I just slammed the door on him. Yeah. God, my thighs are so sore. Anybody want to get their hands to rub me down? You, you have to stop. What? I want the window bed. Fernie walks up to the p pajamas. He goes, wow. He little holds them up and then just goes, <laughs> Bernie. Bernie, no! But he doesn't, it's not like eating, he's he's saving them for later. So can he like say like he like puts them like sure. eating them, but they're going into sure. a compartment. They're going sure. into your he can, he can retain these nice luxurious pajamas Absolutely. for later. 100%. I take the pajamas and I throw them up and I'm in them before they even touch the ground. I hold up a sheet and then try to change behind the sheet without having the sheet fall. So I take off my bra and I'm just like, don't look! And nobody He's looking at me. <laughs> Stop looking. <laughs> I go up to the penis and go, they won't even fit me. <laughs> God, get Bug some water. You are an annoying woman. Oh my God, wow. Bug. What have we talked about? Don't we don't the meanest look. thing. Not how That's, we talk about women, That Bug. is the meanest thing I've, I've heard today, and I witnessed so many deaths. <laughs> <laughs> and before you even finish that sentence, Bug is. <laughs> and Fernie's like, all right, I guess I'll go to bed. He stands up right next to this luxurious bed, but then he just goes like, under the floor. <laughs> oh my god, there's a hole in the ground. <laughs> just slams His face first into the went, ground. Oh my god. And I'm sitting crisscross on my bed. Amazing. And I'm like tossing and turning. I have an eye mask. I keep tossing and just. turning. My feet are uncomfortable. I sigh a lot. And I need like, there's no bedside table. All right. Who farted? Perfect. All right, so y'all are finally sleeping after a long day. And even though you didn't do it particularly gracefully, a lot of deaths happened because of you, which means you have received enough experience to level up. Two? So for those of you, to level four. <laughs> yeah, we did, <laughs> we did so well on that mission, we get to level up. Yeah. I did, know. You did it, because this is yeah. the milestone that you achieved. So oh. I did chat with everybody in between sessions uh, to check in on what level four would look like for them so that we didn't have to work through all this in the moment for y'all. So uh, go ahead and write this down, y'all. Uh, just make little adjustments to your sheet. Kay. Bug, your new maximum HP is 31. Oh yeah, my god. Baby. And you also chose to unlock the feat alert, which means anyone attacking you while you're like asleep or unconscious doesn't get an advantage. And you get a plus five bonus to initiative forever. So add another plus five next to your initiative. Holy shit, thank you. So you're you. gonna be really quick and like titchy forever. Dolores, yeah. your new maximum HP is 27, and you've unlocked the halfling trait, Squat Nimbleness. So we increased your dexterity score by one, you're a little bit faster, and you gained proficiency in athletics. So uh, whenever you're also being grappled, you get a proficiency in athletics there as well. So people can't really hold on to you. Fernie. Love it. Hell yeah. Your max HP is now 35. Woo! You have also chosen to unlock the feat, Sentinel. 
Um, when you attack a creature with an opportunity attack, their speed becomes zero for the rest of the turn, so they basically cannot move. Um, and also, even if something is really sneaky and trying to move away from you after hitting them, you actually get to hit them back even if it's not your turn. Great. So you're a really strong protector of the forest. And finally, Coda. Your new max HP is 22. You have unlocked a feat that is perfect for the Bladesinger. It is Warcaster. So you have advantage on constitution saving throws that you make in order to maintain your concentration on a spell when you take damage. So normally, when someone is making a blade singing motion and they've gotta keep track of what they're doing as like a wizard, um, if they get hit, they lose their concentration. You actually get a bonus to have that not happen. You can also perform all the specific elements of a spell while you have both hands full still, instead of having to use your hand for that spell. So they're basically built to be a perfect warcaster here. And finally, as something walks past you as a reaction, and you know, as Shane can just sort of strike them now, you can cast a spell as a reaction instead of just Ooh. hitting them. That's a big deal. All right, so it's morning time. You wake up feeling incredibly refreshed. Not only that, but you can tell that, you know, even though you're a little bit sore from yesterday, you still feel stronger. You still feel like you could do more push-ups than yesterday, even though you know, you're a little bit tight and a little bit swollen, but that's okay. That's the part of the life of being a mercenary. Your legs are definitely sore from running. Not you, you're a construct. Mm -hmm. But maybe your, uh, your stuff could use a little bit of oiling yeah, and your, yeah. your wood needs a little bit of sunlight and some yeah, natural sure, moisture. Sure. But, um, so you make your way outside and Gunthar is waiting there, tent already packed up, horse ready to go, nestled in the front. He's like, all right, is everybody ready to head on over to the Sinmarl Woods? Did I get beauty sleep? How Was did that you rhetorical? Sleep? I slept very well. Can everyone tell? Sounds like you answered your own. Yes, Somebody Dolores. kept farting yes. though. Okay. Into the wagon. This is a very uneventful trip for you. Um, you're heading along, continuing southeast, even farther from Seraphel, the port city that you came from, past the woods that you've already decimated. Um, you know, not in a very particularly familiar area to any of you. But this is starting to feel a little bit magical, specifically to you, Dolores. As a warlock, you can sense that there's something otherworldly in the air. There's magic here. You start to realize this, and um, as you're passing the woods on your right side here, um, you notice the tree colors start to change a little bit, and you can't quite tell. From some angles, it looks almost like there's a blue hue to it. Some other angles, it looks like there's maybe a pink hue to the leaves. Some of the trees appear a little bit pearlescent, but you can tell that this is a very special place. And so you start to make your way inside. Fernie, you're also feeling a familiar presence here. And you make your way down a dirt path. And because this is a time of relative peace, no monsters are attacking you, but anyone have any questions about maybe what you're seeing? What you're... Is, are all the trees that color hue? Um, so there's trees of all different shapes and sizes. Some have vines hanging down from them. Some have very thin, long trunks with thick branches. A lot of things just don't make sense here. Can I see the sun in the sky? You can, yes. You see the sun, but there's a little bit almost like a, like a shimmer in front of it. Like, you know, when you're on a road and there's a bit of a mirage to it. Mm. Like, you know, you're not trying to stare at the sun, but you can tell that there's like something in the air here. Um, it's magic. Are there, are there any creatures or any movement that I see? Sure, um, roll, a, roll a perception for me. And also, what's your, what's your innate, like, nature, or your innate uh, perception? Nature is plus two, uh, 11. You're looking off into the distance and you see um, this very strange bird. Another strange bird floats down next to it. Just goes Wah, and eats it, spits it back out, and the other one eats it. Wah spits it back out. They do that back and forth for a while and you're just sort of watching this happen. Um, like very normal. <laughs> very. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the trees also, uh, you can see, just sort of becomes a little bit snake-like and then just like retreats into the ground. Whoa. Um, and then pops back up. Oh. Yeah. Do we, does it feel exciting? Yeah, you don't sense that there's anything particularly wrong with this. You're just okay. in a very magical enchanted land. Mm. Oh. Can we go over and touch the tree? You're, you're going along, um, you know, some of the branches and vines are like dangling down. Do you want to like? Yeah. All right. So you um, poke one of the, the vines and you just hear like a little giggle from off in the Whoa. distance. And it recoils a bit and then drops back down. Dolores, don't touch. Whoa. That giggle sounds familiar. What? Nothing. Oh, Dolores. 
<laughs> Bug, are you still drunk? I'm hungover. There's a difference. I wouldn't know, but that, that's true. <laughs> As you're continuing along, you see um, what looks like a kind of ramshackle um, cabin off to the right. And it's the first bit of like, you know, created civilization you've seen in these woods since you entered. And I know what ramshackle means, but for the viewers, yeah, just a little, sorry, it's <laughs> a little bit like a, a little bit run down, like a little bit like a lean to, okay. you know, it's just, it gets the job done, okay. right? And so Gunthar pulls up in front of it. Oh, but it is uh, fairly large. It's like 14 to 15 feet tall. Wow, okay. Um, damn big, and the door is nine feet tall, maybe? Wow, perfect. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. So, so Gunthar pulls up and he's like, all right, this is our stop. Go check in with, uh, what is it? his name was, uh, Tulip, Tulip, oh, I forget. Thank you, Gunthar. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. This place is huge. Yeah. Dolores is like staring up at it. Are there any like codes or things that we need to know? We just gotta find that guy. Oh, okay, let's go. I didn't tell you the code. Oh no. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna lift oh, up you're gonna close. lift up your hand, hit it on the door three times. So knock. Yeah. I know Great. this code. Mm, interesting. <laughs> you don't trust it, Fernie? <laughs> And then uh, before, as you're starting to walk away, Gunthar that. leans down to you and he says, hey, everything I said the other day about you being enough, still true. Oh no, Buck's gonna cry again. What if he's lying? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, st he's standing right there. Just, oh, just like, what if he's lying? <laughs> what if you're not good enough to have imposter syndrome? What if what, if, what if what he's saying isn't true? I was thinking the same thing. Thanks, Gunthar. Yeah, you got a book. I'm gonna do just a fun little backflip. What? Up We're not to the up stairs. Doors. Up to the stairs. Well, they're huge, and I actually get further with a backflip. So I look to the woods and I backflip up the stairs. Up so the for, for any, sorry, it's okay. There, there aren't any stairs, but you can definitely backflip just like in front of the door <laughs> to just like show in off. In front of a door. I I say bye to Gunthar and then do a backflip and turn around to see if he saw it. Uh, Gunthar is uh, uh, just sort of like. <laughs> I love that. Did guy. you see it? What's up? Sorry. Age ain't nothing but a number. <laughs> All right. A word in the hand is a word in the sand. Let's yep. knock on the door. Oh, Fernie, All right. Fernie walks up to the door and he, he goes like this and he goes, Fuck, I totally forgot. The code? How, what was I? Someone else <laughs> Three forgot the code. Knocks. Uh, that's just too much. Okay, I that got it. That is way too much. You got much. it? Dun, dun. Oh. So there's silence for a moment, and then you just hear like a, <laughs> and you just hear, oh. I back like up from heavy, the door. heavy footsteps, but quicker go, than you'd expect. Dolores, stop wanking your thighs again. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me this time. And then I do a backflip away from you. <laughs> <laughs> so the door swings open, uh, but very gently. As a as a face looks out first, he's like. Hey, you've got to make sure you're away from the door. I don't want to hurt you or anything. How tall is this person? I guess we'll so you to find see out. this large creature, um, humanoid, uh, with bluish gray skin and a, and a sort of cherry red nose. Maybe he's been drinking. Maybe that's kind of how his nose is. Very furry in the hair, with the beard and the you know the tousled sort of uh, dusty colored hair. Um, this is a furball. They are the kin of giants, but they're not giants, they're descendants. So he's about eight feet tall, much like Fernie. Whoa! Whoa. Ah, are you the ones that are here to take over my job? Yep. Oh. Yes. Yes. What is your job? <laughs> well, I'm Tillip. I'm the delivery man for this area. Uh... Uh, yes, I'm a gardener by trade, but I end up delivering things for money, and that's how I end up making my living here it's for the so past. Three, four hundred years. Oh my God. Like 50 maybe. This is it. awkward, oh. like when you meet your ex's new person. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Never mind. Don't worry Have about it. Have I made things uncomfortable for no, you? No, you've been great. No, no, I'm sorry. No, I just feel bad we're taking what? your job. No, I need you to. I'm, I'm old. Yeah. Okay. Listen, I. I don't have long left, and I'd like to have my duties fulfilled. Oh my god, that makes me so sad. Awesome. And on top of that, I've got Guinevere, and he points inside, and you see, uh, <laughs> you see this beautiful, uh, majestic unicorn that's like sort of perched up. You know, how, like cats tuck their hands and their <laughs> legs underneath their body. This one's doing the same, but it's missing its front left hoof. Oh, um, hoof or leg? Uh, for like from the knee down, it's like missing the front left. Oh. And um, you see that like uh, Tillip also has a bit of a an injured knee. 
Oh. So he's just like, yeah, I've got Guinevere in there. I can't keep leaving her. She's getting old. I'm getting old. I gotta take care of the poor girl. Right. I don't want to get old. And Guinevere is your wife. Wife? Oh, my responsibility. I found that unicorn. No, not a wife. Oh my God. So Guinevere I, is, is your. People can have daughter? relationships that aren't just sexual. It's also not a relationship. Which is I guess weird. you could say it's, a, it's a pet or something. But like, <laughs> okay. it's, no, I found an injured I'm picture. sorry about them. We're just I don't know what you lovely. are. What, Guinevere, I mean, Guinevere's a unicorn. Furbolg, unicorn. Got it. Pet. He's a robot caretaker. animal, so I don't lines know. are blurred for him yeah. naturally. Oh, Look, God. sometimes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sometimes I'm confused. Can we come in? Hey, you can if you'd like. He beckons you all in. Do you all follow? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I do a backflip in. I do. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, you, you're just tall enough that, like, and get enough distance that, like, the feet just sort of, like, come up to his, like, chin area. He's like, Okay. I can t get a better look at you when I do that. Can you really? Yep. Right. So Tulip, we're looking. I'm tulip. looking for. T oh. So Tulip, we're, um, any any words of advice to do your job well? Because I'm looking uh, to, uh, how do you say, uh, right. uh, have a comeback era. Sure, sure. Well, <laughs> if you're talking about delivery, you've got to make sure you stick to the script. Something has to get from point A to point B. And that's the whole story. Anything else you got to do in between, that's up to you. But it's important that something reaches its destination safely and in one piece. Oh. You've also got to have a sense of regiment. You can't skip your deliveries. You can't make choices on the fly that changes up how the delivery goes. You've got to adapt mm -hmm. with success in mind. I'm always saying that. When? You have. You have not <laughs> said su the word success, I don't think, ever. So you're saying don't make changes, but change on, like. Don't make changes based on your feelings. You've got to search your feelings to see what changes need to be made. Oh. And you start to get the sense that this is just a very, very, very old man. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to share with you. He's just like. Hi hypothetically, yeah. say you were making a delivery, I... but. Say a giant turtle dragon was murdering just hundreds of people in front of you. Would would you give up your delivery in order to to maybe save people yeah. from a giant turtle dragon? Just as a hypothetical. A hypothetical. If would you would you screw up not like getting paid and maybe not fulfilling the delivery if in order to, you know, save a bunch of. Bully, bully wugs. Yeah, you just said the name Ultra and it's supposed to be hypothetical. Wugs. It happened and we just want to know if we oh, made the right you call. Guys. Oh my god, it's hypothetical. <laughs> Self sabotage. <sighs> it's I'm a okay. hypothetical thing that happened to us yesterday. <laughs> oh my god, Bernie! <laughs> it's, I'm just curious. Dolores has a backflip, she's so upset. <laughs> Dol I'm sorry, uh, what was the job that you wanted us oh, to do? So, okay, one thing at the time. Yeah. Uh, the hypothetical that you're offering for me. I would ask if the turtle dragon is between you and your destination. Once the delivery is done, whatever you do is up to you. And whatever stops you from getting your delivery done, you've got to stop that thing. But if the turtle dragon's off to the side, that's none of your business. Now, if it is Bullywugs, you know, I've got a soft spot for all creatures, oh. like Guinevere there, who I met on the delivery, and I came back for her, knowing she was injured. Finished that job, but came back for her. So what's the job we have to do? All right, so... For the past oh, 300, 400 years, I'd say about 410 years, I've been taking moon water from the enchanted spring out back and delivering it to San Saveur, the town up the way, to Castle Town. Some say cursed, others just enchanted. But I gotta say this don't touch anything. Get there, make the delivery, don't touch anything. Anything. It's dangerous. But what if it's a uh, beautiful Don't and touch it. Unless you feel it in your heart. Don't you need yell to at make me. a change. But what if it's one of those little things where there's a bunch of needles and you put your hand in it and it keep, leaves the imprint of your hand? That's oh, porcupine, no. and we've talked about this, Bernie. You don't <laughs> it's touch not them. Art. Okay. Can I walk up to Guinevere and, and try to talk to Guinevere? You can, absolutely. Yeah, great. Um, so I want to go up to Guinevere and just be like, 
How, so what? So what happened with the the leg? <laughs> so intense. Oh god. <laughs> so what's, Have what's you up ever with that? talked to well, a woman before? Well, first let's start with this. Hi, my name's Gwenevieve. What's your name? Oh, I'm Fernie. Hi, Fernie. I like her. Uh, why are you all messed up in the way you are? Don't uh, have any feelings. Uh, no, I, I am pretty messed up. <laughs> I I was a relic for thousands of years, and a bunch of woodland creatures built me back together with what they found in the woods. You know so. what? I admire your straightforwardness and your ability to accept yourself as you are. So. I see where you're coming from. Well, you see, I was being attacked by a band of monsters out in the woods, and this kind furbolg saw the attack, and he went right on past me, and he made his delivery, and he came back for me. Wow. Hmm? And this city that he says is cursed, why, why can't we touch anything? Do you know anything about that? Oh, well, I've never been up there myself. He always comes back for me. But from whenever I saw the city, there wasn't much life there. It sure is pretty from afar, but... I know I haven't seen too much movement. I never see anyone start a fire. I've never seen anyone go in or out. I've never seen anything that would make you think it's a normal city, other than the looks of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Also, I saw, we saw two birds eating One each other cup. and throwing each other up in, in these woods around mm -hmm. here. What is that? What's, what's going on there? <laughs> what's too did you never have a talk? No, Was that funny. sex? I think so. Oh, wow. I've never had it. Same. Mm. I don't think I can. Same. I'm over there. You guys just hear like, uh, 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 and we're just, just going. <laughs> right. God, he's really talking to her for a cool. long time. Did you get any information? She told me what sex is. Oh, what? <laughs> what? Jesus. <laughs> That's what you guys were talking about. And we about were forever? waiting to have that conversation. Oh my god. Okay, it's I okay, guys, it. guys. It's okay. We don't have to talk about it anymore. I know what sex is. <laughs> and we, I fully understand it now. I'm That's kinda worried really that you know what sex is. I fully know what sex is. Okay, so when we go, told we me. bring the water, we don't touch anything. That's exactly right. Thank and you, Tilda. I've been doing this for a long time, so make sure, no matter what. You've got to get through what's ever in your path. You've got to make it up to the castle, through the town. Speak to the castellan, the one who runs the castle. Castellan. Get them the flask of water. They're the only ones you're probably gonna be able to talk to. Don't touch anything unless you have to, but don't want to, but you feel it. And I've been doing this for years. I might take over the job again, but I wanna see what it's like to use your services as a delivery person. Do I change this over to you? Paying you a good price, but making sure that the job gets done, because this is not only my job, it's my duty. Someone has to do this, always. For this town to continue and be safe, someone has to do this. Okay, no pressure. What does the moon water do? The moon water? I've never asked what they do with it. All I know is they need it dearly. You've never... None of my business. I say, where does it go, and I bring it there. Wow, you are just like a man's man. Yeah, I'm a furbolg, actually. Okay, I can, okay. All right, so is that clear? I've got the flask of moon water here. And he drops down this uh, maybe uh, half gallon, half gallon of moon water in a spray bottle. Here's the key. You're gonna need it for the gate. Okay, put it in my purse. Put it in the purse with the jug. Would you like an apple pie slice? I'm all set, thank you. I don't okay. partake. Nobody I'll wants... take one. Okay, great. Thank you. There you go. Um, there is this extremely squished kind of dusty apple pie that's been sitting in a, in a purse. Here you um, go. But somehow it's still delicious. Oh my god, he's my favorite. It's actually really good. Would you guys like one? No. No. You know what? Actually, get out. <laughs> we gotta go, we gotta go. Let's go. I do like five backflips on the way out through the doors. Careful with the water. You're right, sorry. No problem. All right, so y'all uh, go back on up to Gunthar. Hi Gunthar. Um, we're ready to take the moon water. All right, well then go on and take it. I'm gonna be staying here for a bit. Why? I don't know if you heard, but there's a, well, give me a second. Okay. There's a moon water spring out back. And I gotta be honest, I haven't had a nice bath in a while. Also, to be frank with you, I don't want to rescue you again. I want to see you prove yourselves. Oh. This isn't too bad. This old man has been doing it for years. You understand me? Bug looks down, and the second Gunthar says that, I, no I notice my hand starts shaking, and I hide it. <laughs> I'm scared. 
Uh, Gunthar actually rolled high enough to perceive that, and he just he goes like, "Why don't you go three start and go on ahead?" Okay, Bug, bye, Gunthar. Bug, you hang back for just a second here. Bye. I'll be right there, Coda. I keep walking and don't turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Bug, I I feel like you haven't been told this in your life a lot, oh, no. but you're not in trouble. You're not in trouble. I want you to do well. I do. And I express disappointment in you because I know you can do better. I know so I can do. What are you afraid of? Disappointing me or disappointing yourself? Both. Should just be the second one. Don't disappoint yourself. Gosh, you're a wise whatever you are. <laughs> Actually, I'm a centaur and among them, I'm probably the dumbest. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I'll see you soon, Gundar. I'd like that. Bye. Gunthar picks you up and just, Yeet! And I just go. like throws you to. Yeet! <laughs> Whoa! Oh! Upside down. <laughs> hey, you pick me up, I go, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Coda. So, so you guys continue walking down this path, and you pretty quickly make it to the castle town. And it's this very built up uh, street lined with uh, houses on either side, Mo many of them multi story. There's shops, there's carts, there are uh, fountains, there are um, little torch lights there, but not lit. And from what you can tell, there's not a single bit of life here. And looking off into the distance, you can see the castle and a bit of a winding mountainous road up to it, but it's not too far of a walk. But this entire town seems to have no life in it. What do you want to do? Can I detect magic? It, within your entire sort of aura that you're um, using to detect magic, um, you're not really seeing much of anything, but you are getting a little bit of a wisp from one of the houses. Mm. Um, there is uh, just a tiny little glimmer of pink mistiness that you can kind of see through the wall. This is a place we don't touch anything, right? Yes, bug. <laughs> this is the place we don't okay. touch All anything. Right. All right, I'm not gonna Even touch I anything. remembered that. <laughs> okay, Bernie. <laughs> I actually yeah. didn't, so. Anyways, how far is the house? Um, it's actually like not too far on your left. Like it's maybe fifteen feet away from you. Like if if Bug tells you about it, you'd all be able to go see it, and it's like it's just right there. You don't know about it yet. Okay, so I think I, I'm feeling like um, we should go to this house over here, and I point to the house that I felt the magic come from. A house is way cooler than a castle, so. Um, okay. I actually disagree very much. You guys, much, so. what did Tulip say? Tulip. Tulip. T tulip. 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 You guys, what did Tulip say? He don't touch said, anything. But if there's magic, no, we're. He said, get from point A, a to, to point, point B. B. But he was very old. He also old. said some other weird shit. Yeah, and That's stubborn. true. <laughs> That's true. It was a little antiquated. It was a little out of pocket. <laughs> You're right. He had a hoofless unicorn. I don't know what's going on there. Okay, let's just keep going. Let's not be let's able to unicorn, please. <laughs> it's like, flashback. Don't touch anything. Unless you have to, but don't want to, but you feel it. What? <laughs> like, I think if we feel it, we touch it. No, I think we go. Let's just keep going. And touch it. No. Well, we're not touching anything, we're just going inside of a yeah, house. Yeah, we're just going to go. Oh, okay, so let's open the door then. But there, with Don't touch head. the door! Oh! Okay. How about we knock three times? That's touching it. Don't touch anything. Somebody needs to write this stuff down because I think it's ridiculous <laughs> that we have to memorize all of this. Can Fernie do like a scan of the area to see if there's any yeah, roll perception Any people for me. or gold? Yeah, you, uh, use perception for me. Uh, that's an 11. Plus three, I think? Yes. Three. So 14, um, you can see that from, for the most part, from what you can tell, this is an, an untouched village. So you can assume that if uh, it's really untouched and there's stuff inside, then um, there might be gold in there. Can I figure out what's weird about this town? Yeah. Is um, there like danger? So you're not feeling any danger. You're not feeling any danger. From what you can tell, there's not a single bit of life here. Okay. Hmm. Let's just go to the castle. I would like to go to the castle. I would right. like to go. But I guess I'm just curious about the magic house. We'll figure it out later. Let's just go to the castle, do our job, and then we'll come back. We'll come back and then we'll look, look, look at the magic house. You usually go to the gift shop after the museum, not before. That's so, so the that's house so is the true, gift true. shop? I hear that. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, let's go to the castle, I guess. My God. Dolores, are you angry? I'm not angry. <laughs> I'm absolutely fine. I just wanted to see the pink twirly thing and see what it was. We can go see it, but I think we need to go to the castle. Dolores just jumps in the air and does two backflips. 
What is this new thing with you, Dolores? Elsa, you gotta roll for that. I do? You gotta make a roll for that, bro. So usually, here's the deal. If it's going to succeed for something, like you have to make it to the ledge and land on something, I'm gonna have you roll. But like, because we've established that you're a very nimble person yeah. with bonkers thick thighs, yep. unless there's a reason that you shouldn't, I'm not gonna have you roll anymore. Great. Okay, so I just did two backflips and I'm not gonna answer your guys' questions. <laughs> okay, so you're all continuing through the town? Yeah. Yep. All right, great. So um, you make it to where the town meets the path of the castle. And there's this large iron gate. You can see that uh, the part where the lock was uh, has been busted. And it's a little bit open. Wait, I have a key. Uh, it's already open. It's already open. Just don't touch the door. Use your foot. <laughs> We're not allowed to touch this it's door either. Touching. Where not is if this you're wearing a down? shoe. <laughs> Thanks, robot. That means that someone else has been here before us. Mm -hmm. Can I see if someone else has been here before us? Let's well, just go I in. think we can see that someone else has been here. You guys take away all my fun. You guys take away all my fun. Dolores. You guys take away all my fun. Dolores. And nobody wants my pie except for Coda. I do love your pie, but Dolores, now is not the time. We are on a mission. Let's get to the castle. Let's <laughs> open this door. You are strong. Okay. So Dolores, Thank do you, you. still want to like perceive something even if you don't tell them about it? Do you yes. want to like, have your own moment? All right, roll perception for me. She's a little upset and she wants to perceive. Yeah. You're also all welcome to do that anyway, like even if people don't agree. Uh, 13. You have 13? Um, so you're looking, as you pass by this lock, you're looking and it looks like there was not only a lot of force involved in opening this, like it wasn't a finessed kind of job, ah. it was, there was a lot of force to it and you do see that um, even though it's wrought iron, there are just sort of these like scratchy little chunks next to it. Ooh. So, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that to myself. All right. I don't need to scare the crowd. So you're walking forward up this mountainous castle town path and you were starting to admire as the landscape changes. Some of the beautiful foliage that you saw before becomes a little bit more ornate and organized. And you're starting to see that the vines have beautiful patterns in them. And you realize this is the path that royalty would walk. This is a very nice area. And for some reason, these plants are extremely well manicured as well. But you're not sensing that any people are around. Um, Everybody give me a perception check. Uh, 15 plus, uh, that's an 18. It's an 18. 19. 19. Seven. Five. Seven, five. So Bug and Fernie specifically, you're all walking in a line here, but you two sort of look at each other and have this realization that maybe you're not so alone and you hear scratching from the distance. No, I'm looking at and you. almost as quickly as you begin to perceive this scratching, it gets louder and faster and louder and faster and louder and faster. And then in front of you, this wolven lupine creature lands with this huge thud and raises itself forward, breathing heavily. I look at Coda and I look at Fernie. And I hi. I kind of look at Dora. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh I looked down at my hand, and that one hand is still shaking, but then I think about, what's his name? Gunthar. You always forget Gunthar. his name. Gunthar. Then I think about Gunthar, and I hear his voice, and I'm like, I can do this. Let's kill him! Roll for initiative. Whoa. And with that, that is the end of episode three. Uh, please check out our other two episodes and show him some love. Share this with your friends, leave some comments, and uh, we can't wait to see you next time on Sword AF.